In the following videos, I'm going to show you how to add H2 in memory database to our Spring Boot project. And in this video, I wanted to give you a brief overview of H2 console and how it looks inside. So when you open H2 console, and I'm going to show you how to do it later, uh, you are presented with this login view. And then from the save settings, you can choose the database that you want to connect to. You can connect to H2 in memory database to browse the data that you have in memory, or you can also use H2 console to connect to other databases that are standalone, that are running on your computer and that have data stored on your hard drive, actually not in memory. So H2 console is a very good tool for your developer's toolbox. So let's see how we can use H2 console to connect to MySQL. For example, I have MySQL database server running and I have some data there. So I'll select MySQL from the save settings drop down menu. And here I have database driver class. I don't want to change it, leave it as is, but the database URL here, you can change it. Usually the first part of it, like GDBC, MySQL, localhost, and the port number doesn't change. And it's only database name that will change depending on the database that you want to connect. In my MySQL database, I have created a database called Photo App. And in my project, I have a database Photo App that I was connecting to. This is my application properties file. And um, these are the connection details to connect to MySQL. I have commented out uh, data source URL so I could use uh, in memory database instead. But to connect to MySQL, I would use this GDBC uh, data source URL for my uh, H2 console. So I will copy and paste it here. And the last part here is the database name and then username and password, which I also have here, username and password. These are the username and password that we use to connect to MySQL. These are the same username and password that you will use when you're connecting to MySQL using any other graphical user interfaces or even the terminal window. So the username and password to connect to my photo app database MySQL database that is on my computer is Sergey Sergey. I will provide and click on connect button. And it brings the H2 console uh, user interface that we can use to browse database structure and to run some SQL queries manually. So on the left side, I have database tables that I have in my MySQL database. I can unfold database table structure and preview it. These are the fields that we have created in our Java entity. And when our project runs, the database is being created or updated based on those uh, Java entities. If you click on the database name here, um, the first time it will bring the SQL query into this editor view. And then you can run this SQL query to preview the data stored in a database table. So I can um, click on the run button and that will execute the select from users SQL query and give me the results. I can view it. I can copy the value if I need from here. As you can see, it's very convenient. Now this uh, SQL query can be edited. I can, for example, add some more SQL to it. For example, select all from users where uh, email equals and then I will copy email address from here test1 at test.com and close the line with a semicolon and click on run. And that will execute this SQL query and give me now the results below. And I can also run multiple SQL query at the same time. Let me, for example, copy this SQL query, select all from users and paste it uh, one line below and also close it with a semicolon. Now I can run two SQL queries at the same time. All I need to do is click on this run button and then I have the results of these two SQL queries here below. And this is very efficient. As I work with my database, I can um, have many SQL queries in this editor view, and I don't have to delete them every time I create a new one. So a history of my SQL commands is uh, kept here, or you can always click on this button here, which will display the command history. If I click here, the SQL commands will be listed in the view below. And then I can always click on the SQL query I like, and it will bring it in. And then I can run it, or I can edit it, and I can reuse it and don't have to write it from scratch every time. So I can bring up the SQL queries history again. 
and then select the one I want and and then run it. So if you have multiple SQL queries, for example, if you have this SQL query and then you have another one, for example, I'll select from um, users where ID equals one to four. If you have multiple SQL queries and then you want to run a single one, steal a one out of five, let's say, then you can uh, select that SQL query only and then click on this button, run selected. And only one SQL query that you have selected will be executed, which is very convenient. Now, if you look at the users table, there are fields that have uh, loan field names like email verification token. And if you have to run a SQL query that needs to return email verification status and email verification token, then writing that SQL query manually might be uh, very time consuming. So what you can do, you can remove this asterisk now, for example, and let's say you want to select email verification, you start typing email and then underscore and click on auto complete button and then it will bring up the suggestion. So email verification status you want to select and then put comma and then start typing the second field that you want to select, for example, email underscore verification and then click on auto complete and then select the second field, email verification token from uh, users where you don't really need already because that will not make sense. So now select email verification status and email verification token from table users and click on run selected query only. And that will bring up a result of this SQL queries that contains only two fields email verification status and email verification token. Or instead of using other complete, you can simply click on the field and that will bring the field name into the SQL query. So as I type in and I need to pick up one of the fields here, I can click on the field and then bring it in. As you can see, it can be very quick to compose a SQL query using just the graphical user interface that H2 console provides. And again, we can use it to access our standalone databases like Oracle or MySQL or DB2. And we can use it to connect to our in-memory databases like H2 and preview our data. And if needed, edit that data or delete the records from a database table and then send HTTP request to our, our web service API and see if it gets inserted again. Okay, so let's continue and let's learn how to add the H2 console and H2 database support into our Spring Boot project.